Welcome to another quick tips video. Now today's quick tip video is on key commands and I've started by taking a four minute video of me operating Cubase using the computer keyboard and you can see just how many times my fingers are touching key commands or shortcuts. Now I remember looking at guys who seemed to know all of the key commands and it was just like watching software ninjas. They moved around the software so quickly. Becoming a software ninja is not as hard as it looks. You can buy a keyboard that already has the Cubase key commands on it, or you can buy stickers which you can actually stick on the keys to show you where the key commands are. I promise you, learning key commands will be one of the best things you have ever done inside of Cubase. Key commands are important when it comes to workflow, especially if you don't have an external controller. And you can set your own by going into File and Key Commands. And here you can see just how many different commands we can assign a shortcut key or combination of keys to. To delete an existing key command, select the key command and click on the Delete button. And Cubase will prompt to ask you if you really want to remove this. The next step is to find a key or a combination of keys that is not already in use inside of Cubase. Once you've done that, click Assign and OK. And now you've got a shortcut for that specific command. There are a lot of pre-existing key commands in Steinberg software, so sometimes you need to just take a little bit of time to find a key command or combination that's free. As with all presets inside of Cubase, you can save your key command presets, you can delete them, and you can import them from another computer or system. Let's go through some of the crucial key commands for operating Cubase. First of all, S is for soloing a track. M is for muting a track. R lets us toggle record enable on and off. The numbers along the top let us move in between tools very quickly. Number two is the inspector, so I can set a range and I can use something like A to apply fades to range and now I've got an automatic fade. I can move the range and then click A again. Double clicking A will bring up the fade settings window and I can change in between different types of fades. Let's keep moving through our tools. Number three is a scissor tool. And while I don't think I need to give you any tips on using a pair of scissors, I can certainly help you with accuracy. At the moment, it's cutting anywhere, but if I click J, it will snap to my grid. The grid is currently set to bars, so I just need to move my mouse over the area and click with the mouse button to perform an accurate cut. Now, if I highlight the new events, I can click X on my computer keyboard to insert a crossfade, which crossfades volume so there'll never be any clicks or pops. I can hit X twice to bring up the crossfade menu and make changes there. Selecting four will bring up our glue tool and we just highlight an area and click once to glue regions together. Six will bring up the zoom tool. If we go into the sample edit window, we can find an area that we want to zoom in on draw a rectangle around it, and the area is enlarged so we can take a closer look to see what's going on. Five will bring up an eraser, and we can click on an event to delete it. In addition to hitting the M button to mute a whole entire track, number seven will bring up the mute tool, which will allow us to mute and unmute individual events out in the project window. I use G and H loads to zoom in and out horizontally, much the same way you can hold down shift and use G and H to zoom in and out vertically. The Locate Selection command, or L, is one of my most used key commands. All I need to do is click on an event, click on L, and I'm at the start of the event, and I can record, or play, or start editing. When you're working with a lot of events in a project, it's important to be able to move backwards and forwards between them quickly. I use B, which is Locate Previous Event, and N, which is Locate Next Event, to move in between the events in my project. Another really important key command is the P button, which is set locators to selection. When I highlight a region, hit the P button, the left and right locators are automatically mapped to that area that I've selected. Of course, the most universal key command in any door is C, which turns the click on and off. We can also highlight a region, hit Q, and quantize that region. We just need to ensure that our quantize settings are correct. Command M will bring up our markers. We can insert markers at really important points in our project, and we can use a numeric keypad to move quickly in between these different markers. We can quickly toggle cycle mode on and off using the forward slash key on the numeric keypad. We're all different, so different people or users have different preferences, key commands, keyboard languages, even colors inside of Cubase. 
Inside of the Profile Manager, we can set up unique profiles for all of the users using one computer. So all we do is add a profile name and we can move backwards and forwards in between different profiles. You do need to restart Cubase to access the new profile. We can import and export our user profile settings and that's fantastic because it means that I can take my very own workflow wherever I go. All I need to do is export it and when I get to the computer that has Cubase installed, import it in, and that's my version of Cubase inside someone else's computer.